Welcome everybody, this is Illiterate. My name is Evan. My name is Taylor. And I have read the book. I have not read the book. Taylor reads the book, I don't read the book, so that you can go out tonight and have five topics to talk about to make you sound cooler at parties. Whoa. First up, we got an announcement. Somebody won. Somebody won. We're gonna be announcing that winner in our email list this Friday. You gotta go look at that email list to see. It's illiterate at email.com. Sign up for that email list. That's where we're gonna be doing giveaways. That's where we're gonna be putting in more tips, more tricks, memes, funny video, anything. If you want more from us, you want more of the show, illiterate at email.com. Hit it up. This week we got Black Klansman. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Black Klansman is written by Ron Stallworth. It came out in 2014. I didn't know this. It was a number one New York Times bestseller. That was actually pretty impressive. On Amazon, I saw it had, generally, I saw just people enjoyed it. It's a quick, light, funny read a lot of times. Uh, if there were negative stuff, people said it was boring or that just the writing was bad. So, um, Well, this guy's not a writer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a cop. He's taking down the KKK. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that seemed to be the, the general consensus. What do you got, Taylor? The situation happened in the 70s. He did not start talking about it until way, way after. So he kept it a secret. But we'll get into oh, some of that okay. in the discussion. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of yeah. under the impression that this wasn't some big secret. So the fact that this has only come out in the last five years. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give us a brief summary of the plot. Get an overview it is about, of it. Yeah, it's about this guy's life, Ron Stallworth who's in Colorado Springs. He becomes a cadet in the police department there. After two years, uh, he becomes a beat cop. That's the process. He was the first black man to be a cadet, mm. to be a police officer, and then to be a detective. What year? So he gets hired in 72, and then the case ends in 79. Okay. So that's the span of time that the whole thing takes place. The case okay. itself where he's in the KKK, the whole grist of the story, mm -hmm. takes place only over nine months okay. of that span of time. But he's a cop. So in, he kind of gets in and, and works his way up to the point where they're and, like, yeah. maybe you can do this. Yeah, so the start of the book, he, he wanted to be a PE teacher. And then he heard about this cadet thing. He thought, oh, maybe I'll do that for a bit. And then just stayed with it the rest of his. He never became a PE teacher. <laughs> Thank just, God. Uh, yeah. You know, this is all right. Yeah. Well, that's what he says in the book. He's like, it was, years. yeah, it was super fun. And he's like, I love it. So I want to keep doing it. Um, he joined the narcotics undercover beat after a year of being a police officer. He was harassing them to try and make that happen because it seemed so cool. He was sort of a square police officer. And then the narcotics dudes looked like a bunch of hippies coming in undercover work. Oh, just yeah. where he, he was talking about how he's looking over his shoulder while they're, they're laughing and going to their office. Hey, Joe, <laughs> we're going to hang out Friday night again. Oh, you know, it. So yeah. he's just, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. He also liked the fact that they could wear whatever they wanted. He hated the uniform. Oh, that would be a big deal. Yeah. So after his first assignment, he got into it. It's this Black Panther rally. And we just want to get the scoop on what's going on because we don't want there to be a huge riot or anything if they're planning that or inciting people in the community. So he said, sure. Interesting. He's 21 when he gets to do that. So he does the <laughs> narc thing for five years, works undercover, doing various operations. And then this is when the start of the story takes place. So he sees a classified ad for the KKK in the newspaper. <laughs> So he thinks, okay, well, either this is a Bold. prank. Bold. Yeah. <laughs> Join the KKK. So this is so he's like, either yes. this is a prank or it's from you know it's a nationwide thing, and he's just going to get some literature. On yeah, the situation. no way. You're looking at it like, nah. -uh. <laughs> so that's why he gives him his real name, saying, okay, well, but he gives him the secret PO box and the secret phone number for mm. the narc situation. But then gets a call. They're like, is this Ron? And he's like, yeah. It's like, well, this is the KKK. We heard you wanted to join. They just call you up. Yeah. Hey, you interested? Yeah, it's very much Ugh. a club. We're going to get into some of that, the dynamics of that that he exposes where it does seem kind of silly. Awesome. All that happens. He gets his friend Chuck never revealed who this person actually is. So he becomes the face and real life persona gotcha. of Ron. And they so meet. For all of you characters that have seen the movie, that's the Adam Driver character. Right. And so they meet him at a motel. They tell him all the plans. He's wired. Ron is in a van off listening to what's going on. Tells him all the different stuff that they want to do in Colorado Springs. KKK sort of stuff. Cross burnings. Hmm. Things like that. Horrendous. Horrendous. Over time. But it's all like, there's no like massive like plan or like 
What, so what are so they? What are what are they describing? Cross their burnings. Plans? They're gonna merge another like sort of Nazi type group with them, and then the big thing is David Duke is gonna come to visit in January, and they want to have a hundred KKK members walking through the streets in gotcha. robes. Oh, for, so they want David. So that's their big dis- thing that they're trying to accomplish. They want to display. Yeah. Wow. So then he's just chilling one day. Ron is at the office. David Duke calls him. Hello, this is David Duke. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Well, it was some God. it was some line. I believe I don't think he actually called him. I think Ron called him up. <laughs> okay. Called like a line to learn more about the KKK, but then the actual it's like calling customer service and then the CEO of Apple answers. Yeah. Like, Wait yeah. a second. The whole thing seems like there is no middle ground. It just goes right to the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happens. So Ron complains because his membership's been delayed. Because they, you have to f- pay membership dues and get a card and all this stuff. He's like, I can't do any KKK business until you <laughs> send talking me to my David Duke, but I can't membership do any card. KKK so David Duke's business. like, Oh, I'm so sorry. We'll expedite the process. More things happen. The main guys, Ken and Butch, who are the heads of the KKK in Colorado Springs, they want Ron to my be chapter leaders. They want Ron to be the chapter leader. Oh. Uh. But then he, he, he beat us, Ron. Yeah, he pushes them away. <laughs> He's like, I can't do this. So they're like, Well, fine. You got to get at least if you can't do that, you got to get more members. He's like, Perfect, more undercover people. <laughs> oh, so he gets okay. this. So he gets this other guy, Jimmy, to come into the picture. It ends up David Duke gets into town. They meet up with the Denver group, watch Birth of a Nation together. Ooh. Just kind of a party situation. <laughs> They don't end up getting the full hundred people in robes and all that stuff. So they don't have the march, but How they just close meet they get? like fifteen people. They just oh, meet at a steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> but Ron ends up being the plainclothes police officer protecting them. Right, right. And his other guys, Jimmy and Chuck, are undercover pretending to be a part of the KKK. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But Chuck is pretending to be Ron, so he's like, I'm a part of this community. I hope to God nobody's like, Hey Ron, how's it going? You know. He gets to take a picture with David Duke as kind of a one final middle finger to him. <laughs> the picture is lost to history, unfortunately. Is it really? Yeah. No! Yeah, I looked it up. So then after David Duke gets there, nothing happens. Norad contacts him and is like, hey, we need your info on this KKK business. So he comes in with the folder about what's going on. And it's two guys that are working there that they realize are super involved in the KKK. And they're like, well, they can't have their finger over the nuclear launch button. Oh, my God. So they send them up to the North Pole or Greenland or something. Hold on. Wait. Away. Take it back. Explain that again. This goes up the chain fast. Yeah. Whoa. So Ron is compiling. Sound like boots on the ground, Colorado Springs right, right here. And well, I Ron felt is, like I Ron is, the yeah. president. Ron is compiling all of this intelligence over <laughs> right. time. And because he's talking to David Duke, David's like, yeah, we're planning a rally in New Orleans on the whatever. Mm. So then Ron calls up the New Orleans police department and is like, hey, get a bunch of squad cars. Look into this. Here's the name of the person who's the whatever there. And they start shutting it down gotcha. all across the country. Oh, wow. So then NORAD contacts him, which is way up there, and is like, we need your books. We need to know what's going on. And they corroborate with him to understand that there are two people at this facility that are way up the chain of command in the KKK. So they remove them from that situation. So after this nine months, they ask him to trash the operation, delete all the... Fu- his chief of police says, get rid of all this stuff. We're done with this investigation. Ron keeps a couple of the folders for himself in his house doesn't destroy it all which he sure. could he could have gotten in a lot of trouble yeah. at the time keeps it a secret continues to work as a police officer all over the place ends up in Utah does that most of the time and then retires in 2005 gets his degree finally in criminal justice in mm. 2007 Look at he him. was just a high school graduate yeah wow and then does an interview with somebody in Utah and says, yeah, I did this operation, blows up, writes a book, gets wow. a movie made, and here we are. All within the last few years. That's mm-hmm. insane. That's a summary. I love it. Now, you have not seen the film. No. No. I have seen the film. I saw it when it came out. I enjoyed it, but I've heard that there are definitely some differences between the film and, and the book and, and what happened in real life. Mm-hmm. So... I read the Wikipedia page, Oop. and I know that there's a giant bombing situation. That yeah, so it sounds like movie. that's just not... That's to build the tension. That did not cool. happen. Okay. Yeah. Did you want me to read a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I did listen to this on audiobook. I think it was an interesting thing to do because the whole point is, here's this guy who's pretending to be a KKK member communicating over the phone 
and his voice is what sells them that he's a white man. So to hear him read the story, Ooh, yeah. you get a sense of this guy's oh. actual voice because it's read by the author. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, so pick up the audiobook that's read by Ron Stallworth and you get it straight from his mouth. Oh my God. Uh, so I really like that. So I'm not doing his voice, but this is just kind of the style of... Close enough. Here we, <laughs> here we go. So this is a situation talking about where he hates the uniforms and... They, he has an afro, and they gave him a too small of a hat. <laughs> you can either wear this cap or get a haircut, he said to me, and then laughed. I decided to flip his snarky arrogance back at him by taking the hat without any further challenge. Department policy stated that whenever a person in the uniformed ranks left the building, he or she was required to wear his hat. Beginning the very next day, I started leaving the police department to walk the downtown streets in search of a lunchtime eatery. I would put my one-and-a-half sizes too small hat on top of my afro-styled head, hold up my head high and proudly walk down those city streets in my police cadet uniform, looking like a damn clown, acknowledging with a tip of my cap and a how do you do, the funny looks from the people who stared and pointed their fingers. This went on for about a month until one day the chief of police saw me coming back from one of my lunch breaks. Hmm. So it's just pretty simple style narrated, but... Gotcha. We're going into our topics now. We've got five topics, breaking them down for you. Topic number one, what to talk about with the Grand Wizard. Topic number two, an intelligence investigation. Mm -hmm. Intelligence in quotes. Topic number three, Denver International Airport. Hmm. I've heard some things about that. Topic number four, hypocrisy. <laughs> and then finally, topic number five, startup culture in the clan. Startup culture. Madness. Weird. It's like Silicon. It's like a racist Tim Cook or like... Yeah. <laughs> We'll figure it out. Topic All number right, one. topic number one. Here we go. What to talk about with the Grand Wizard. So day one, when they give him the call and they're like, hey, you want to join the clan? He has to think on the spot. He has to be like, why do I want to join the clan? If I'm going to be, because he did not consider this a proper intelligence investigation. It just came up. He put it on a lark. He used his real name because he thought they were just right, going to send right. him a magazine or something. Right. But the fact that they called him and they're like, no, sure. we're in the town. <laughs> <laughs> why do you why do you want to be a part? So he has to come up with something. So he thinks intuitively, okay, what is all the stuff that's been said mm -hmm, to me mm -hmm. uh, in the past? And why would these people not? So he has to pretend to be. So he uses the N-word <laughs> a bunch <laughs> and says that there's this black man who is with his sister and, you know, ruining the, oh, no. all that stuff. And they just eat it up. <laughs> like, oh, well, you sound... So he continues this facade over and over and over again and continuing on about that, okay. how to talk. Once David Duke comes into play, he asks David Duke because now he's getting sort of cocky about the situation. They've been fooling him for months. He's like, aren't you worried that some black guy is going to call you and pretend to be? <laughs> oh, no. And David Duke says, I can tell you're a white man. Because, and goes to list a litany of racist reasons oh. about how his speech patterns are and how he doesn't do these things with his R's at the end of his words. And he's like, oh. I would know. So then for the rest of the time, Ron does that when he talks to him over the phone, uses those things mm -hmm. that he says he would recognize as a black person. And he still doesn't uh. recognize him. Oh man! No, yeah. I remember that being in like heavily in the trailers for the for the film is like that first phone call conversation, and he just goes off on some racist tirade, and the whole office has to like turn around and look at him like Ron, who are you talking to? <laughs> are you all right, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> so he just realizes that you just have to agree with them. So he was talking, becoming really chummy with David Duke, and he David Duke would reveal what was going on in the rest of the United States to him. Just like giving him like... like giving him where they're doing, well, where the cross you know what they're burning. doing over in Minnesota. You're going to get a load of this. they about to have a rally. Yeah. He's like, cool, let me call up the police over there. <laughs> or call them, let's shut that down on this. <laughs> yeah. And David Duke would be surprised. He'd be like, it seems like they're stopping us at every turn. How do they... Hmm. It's like they've got someone on the inside. That I'm talking to right now. Hmm. It's like they know everything. It's like they're in this room. Ron. <laughs> but... <laughs> There was one last little thing which I which I had seen an article about called the ARE method, which I felt like Ron used. Mm. And this is kind of a social thing. It was like how to talk at parties. And I thought, well, I should read this article. Uh, so they were saying using the ARE method, the three things are anchor, reveal, and then encourage. If you feel like you're getting stopped up in a situation about talking to people, anchor, 
the situation, which is why people always like some weather we're having or, mm-hmm. oh, the Browns are really doing terrible this year. <laughs> Hook Whatever em. it is. The anchor. Hook them. Something that you both can agree on. Then reveal a little bit about yourself. Then a taste, just a little, yeah. Give. Give, give in some the situation. Interest? Yeah, give. And then encourage. Get them to reveal something about mm, themselves. So I think he did this forth. to full force. He anchored. He said, I'm racist. I hate <laughs> black people. And then revealed a little bit more about himself. We're having trouble with the cross burnings over here. And, my and then sister. encourage, where else are the cross burnings going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's brilliant. just like butter <laughs> in a hot pan. <laughs> and they seem up. so desperate that they will, they, they would just spill the beans to anybody they who was so like, happy I'm racist. That anybody... like, well, I'm <laughs> yeah. It was silly. Topic number two an intelligence investigation. In quotes. Quotes intelligence, because they all dumb. At the end of the investigation, people were either questioned or he had his own personal conflict because he's like, what did we actually do? Because they had no arrests. They did not get any contraband or any, essentially nothing happened. But I, I didn't understand this it concept, like but he was saying plot it was an intelligence investigation, not a criminal investigation. Mm-hmm. And so that was not the Reconnaissance. intent. You're just, the intent was yeah. to get, and they gathered a ton of information. How do they said, operate? Who's involved? Where do they operate? How do we stop them? He said... Yeah. What I got out of it and why it was so useful was at Invaluable. the end of the day in Colorado Springs, a mother never had to explain to her kid why there's a cross burning on the hill up there and what does that mean. The town never had anything. David Duke showed up, went to a steakhouse, <laughs> you know, whatever. But there was never anything wow. that he, during that investigation that some parent would have to be like, well, well you have to be scared now. Right. Or whatever. You didn't have to in, in, introduce that part of the world to your child. Yeah. One last little thing about the intelligence investigation. You're talking about how they seem buffoonish. Yeah. I watched an interview with Ron Stallworth, the real guy, and Spike Lee. Mm-hmm. And they were saying that David Duke, now, modern times, called Ron Stallworth, somehow got his number. It was like, I'm worried about how I'm being portrayed in the film. I saw the trailer. This is before the movie Don't came Don't worry, out. just racist. Yeah. <laughs> And he was like, I'm worried that I look foolish. And Ron was like, well, you were foolish. I had a high school diploma. Yeah. (laughs) And I didn't know anything. I pulled the wool over your entire organization's eyes from a phone. (laughs) Yeah. And then he said that for whatever reason, he was like, I respect Spike Lee greatly. Spike Lee's like, that's a compliment I don't want from David Duke. It's like, who are you? Why are you saying that you like Spike Lee? All his movies are about the opposite of what you stand for. Yeah, the uplifting of, of the black community and the black experience. Yeah, what are you talking about, David Duke? <laughs> no, I really like the Spike Lee's film. You, what? So, Who even in you? that, it's like, well, then you should be portrayed as a buffoon. <laughs> you you be sound worried. like one now. I'm trusted you, and now look at what they've painted me like. It looks like I ran the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> and badly. It looks not only did I run the KKK, but I was a complete doofus while doing it. And that's just not true. (laughs) Insane madness. Yeah. Topic number three. Mm. We're going to go back, 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 back in time Mm. to before the Denver International Airport existed. We're going to go back (laughs) in time. Is that copyrighted material? (laughs) Uh, Probably. (laughs) Too bad. Nobody cares. (laughs) We the the clan eras. I didn't. I had to look up stuff about the clan because he touches briefly on the history of it. Okay. Started after the Civil War, then sort of dipped down after that, then picked back up again in 1915. Because That's Birth of, of a Nation. Birth right? of a Nation. Birth of a Nation. The movie which we're talking about, which heavily endorsed clan work and whatnot it's still exists it's it's public domain now yeah. so if you go to the wikipedia page you could watch the whole thing if you wanted to that sort of resurged the efforts of this group the movie came up with all of the symbology and the white hoods and robes and the b- burning crosses and all of that stuff right which i didn't know about because it seemed like that was what was happening in the civil war and then they retook it on the no, movie it made like it all up for just yeah his, from his the movie cinema yeah and so then it resurged majorly action. in that time frame. So where the Denver International Airport comes in is around here because the FBI is showing him files. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I didn't know any of this stuff that was going on in Colorado specifically. So the mayor who in the 20s is Benjamin Stapleton was heavy, heavy clan presence. Also and CEO he... of Staples. <laughs> Unverified. <laughs> um, he 
appointed all of these people that were also clan members. So the clan ran Colorado in the 20s, wow. including the governor, Morley, senators, Means and Phipp, the lieutenant governor, the attorney general, the chief of police of Denver. All of these people were definitely part of the clan. Jesus. And there was even stuff where like literature that was talking about Colorado, they changed the C in Colorado to a K. It was all over the place. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. So the municipal projects that he came up with, one of them was this airport, which is Stapleton Airport, which was called Stapleton Airport until 1995 when they switched it to the Denver International Airport. Okay. But now it's a town or a suburb that's also still called Stapleton. Stapleton. <laughs> but that all ended in 1926, all of this KKK being a part of the government. But that is a huge element of... There, I mean, David Duke tried to run for president. This, oh, it's... their their thing is, how do we change it? Well, we get into the government. They they want power. They and and the way they would go about that during that time, and especially the nineteen twenty four Democratic Convention, they were so heavily in involved in politics at that time that they held up the Democratic Convention because they were trying to get their policies adopted into the platform. And it went on for days. It, it, was, it was a struggle. It was an absolute struggle. This was in uh, the 20s? This was in 1924. Yeah, so same time. Um, <clears throat> so, it, it, and, and that was that was a piece of history I wasn't even privy to until the last couple of years when Char when Charlottesville happened. Um, I was kind of shocked to find out that during this time, the KKK marched thousands strong in Washington, D.C., in full robe regalia. And there are pictures of it like on on the national lawn like it it's haunting there, there's well-documented photographs all through the years but i didn't know anything about it yeah this is all I, stuff that i've learned in the last couple of years and, and I, I was you know growing up i was missed and growing up in the south even i i was under the impression that in you georgia. know we were we, yeah and down in georgia um <clears throat> i was under the impression that you know we as a country had moved on from it well, except we've been proven very very wrong recently yeah uh, but uh but the idea that the KKK are just a bunch of like ex cons sitting around with Budweisers in someone's backyards in the woods, you know, burning a cross, like diddling around doing nothing. That's what I thought the KKK was. I thought it was a bunch of losers who had nothing better to do. That's and they're always still losers, been. but they're still losers, but they but they but they are trying to shape policy. They and they still are trying to do it. And it's it's fascinating to learn how close that they have gotten. Right. And up until country. like I said, up until nineteen ninety five, this guy still had his name on the airport right. of Denver. Right. Right. No, it, it it's it's shocking to me that to learn how close we got and how close we still are. Um that's the point of this story is an intelligence investigation. Right. And, and we can more. laugh about, you know, he goes off, he goes off just spouting off the, the things that he's been told, the things that he's heard said to him. He says, oh, this is why, and this is why I want to join the KK. It's like, and we laugh about that because of the comedy of it, because of the context of it. But it's, that's the brilliant in the brilliance in the book and the movie is, is showing like, it's funny, but it's real and it's not funny. Yeah. That's when very, it actually very important. gets implemented before they can it's stop like, it's it. It's funny. Ha ha ha. Look at, look at the situation. Funny. It's even funny because it's true and it happened. Look how stupid they were. But underneath it all, it's not funny because it's real. Yeah. So talking about that, topic number four, hypocrisy. Mm. Doing one thing, saying another, saying one thing, doing another. At the beginning of the book, Ron is being interviewed to be a cadet for this police force. First black man for any of this stuff. And one of these guys says... Can you be like Jackie Robinson? Because the implication was that he confronted these issues with silence. Mm. He just took it, took the weight and the brunt of it, didn't lash out, didn't whatever. Just absorbed the scene and said that I'm going to be the better, per you know, the high road kind of situation. Gotcha. Ron, of course, says, yes, I can do that. And secretly he's like, that's not how I was. My mom uh -huh. taught me to fight yeah. anybody who <laughs> says one thing to me. He's like, I lost every single fight. When I came home, my mom was like, did you win? I was like, yeah, and I didn't, but that is not in his nature. So you see that, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily hypocrisy, but it's him living that dual life of also, I'm just gaining intelligence, but I want to stick it to him. Yeah. So there's a lot of situations like with the hat where he's like, well, they say I have to do this kind of in silence, but I'm also acting out yeah, in a way. Yeah. So another situation is with these phone conversations. Like I said, he, he asks David Duke how he knows that he's not a, you know, black man. And then the last thing is the photo that he takes when he is the plainclothes yeah. officer protecting them. You can stay part of the course and still get your shot in. Yeah. 
and and still win in his now there's a movie about him grabbing david, mm-hmm. david duke's shoulder and taking that picture yeah. it's like he won and in that he kept his mouth closed and he won yeah in that photo situation in the book he mentions another character which starts out earlier who is a fireman in the town who is the chapter leader I mean, he's a fireman. That's his duty. And that was above everything else. Mm -hmm. So he like gave mouth to mouth on a black guy to save his life. And so when Ron is in this situation protecting David Duke and says to David Duke, I'm going to do everything I can to protect you. There's this strange hypocrisy. He said, I felt like the guy who was the fireman because I'm doing the same thing he's doing. This is my job as a policeman. If somebody comes after this guy, even though I've been on an investigation for nine months trying to stop him. Yeah. Well, he, if somebody you know, goes to shoot him. hurt him. You, no, you can't allow that. I'm a police happen. officer yeah. and that's my job. So it was this weird uh, connection between him and this other guy who was like, I get it why this guy is a fireman and will help. Because right. that's, if, if you don't do that, then it all falls apart. Yeah. Then the whole system fails. There's another fight. And it's like, there's a fight face to face. And then there's the fight of history. And who's, mm-hmm. you know, who's going to come out the victor? Who's going to be, whose story is going to be told? So. There's yeah. a clear winner there. Next one, last one, best one. Startup culture in the KKK. Startup culture in the KKK. This was the silliest part of the whole damn thing. <laughs> application forms. They were so, so particular about, well, you got to fill out your application form. You got to do it this way. It's a, it's a $10 for the rest of the year and then $30 a year and your membership card costs $15. But just the fact that they're so obsessed with these forms and filling them out and sending them to corporate and doing all this stuff. And then back to the meeting places. It sounds like an image thing. Because it's like, why? Right. And, but then, but that, that's where I'm saying is like, and then David Duke calls you up personally <laughs> before you're even a member. Yeah. It's like, this does not feel real. It feels like some sort of like scam agency. Well, that's what like, I mean about yeah, the startup yeah. culture where it's yeah. like, okay, you act like yeah. you're this big company, but then you're recording it's stuff in a closet David. or you're whatever. So like they meet up and he's like, where are we going to meet? And they meet at Denny's before <laughs> this thing where they go watch Birth of a Nation. They're meeting at Denny's and they have a thing of merch. They're like shirts that are like white power forever or whatever. And people are buying them. The 15 people that show up for this meeting. Good it's like, what God. are you doing making t-shirts, meeting at Denny's? They got these secret handshakes that he learns. And he's like, this is so silly. What is this? <laughs> the boys club. This is, this is children. This is yeah. middle school. A is D. C. You know, it's like yeah. they've got what like code. <laughs> like this is, this is child's play. But it's bizarre because the thing that they're doing is so you know, awful. Trying to get people in government, trying to burn crosses, trying to do all this stuff. But then the means they go about it is so, I don't Silly. know. Silly. It's just like goofy. <laughs> it's just goofy. They just do not have the wherewithal to run something like this. And just the fact that you, you, get, a, you, get, a, you get a membership card. Who, why? <laughs> Are you in the KKK, Ron Stallworth? Okay. And you're gonna sh- you're gonna flash that at at, at what Chili's when, to get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when do you? It's just yeah. It's like getting a trophy. Or yeah. Getting, it's just all show and no anything. To so get your discount when you get your you know yeah. you flash it to the other KKK member working at the barbershop for fifteen percent off. Yeah. Like what? Is, what? All right. Well, let's move on here. We're gonna get to our five ways to sound cooler at parties. Mm. Mm. Number one: How to talk to the Grand Wizard, the anchor. Yeah, the, the A-R-E reveal E method. And then the c- encourage. Anchor, yeah, reveal, yeah. encourage. So the anchor, you're at this party, or this is somebody that's a mutual friend at work, or this is... you got to start... So that's the starter. ...with a shared ground. You comment on yeah. that. If you if you know one thing about a person, like, you know, okay, well, they're holding, like, they're holding a, a trumpet case. Odds are they're a musician. I mm-hmm. could I could say, well, have you heard about this new, you know, new band? New, You know, try to, try to meet them on their level, something that they're interested in. Just uh, some entry point... That leads into the next one to get them opening up, which yeah. is... Yeah, the system there is having something juicy, mm-hmm. but then the second part, which I think ties into what you're talking about, the second part is you have to divulge yourself, because you can say, oh, that trumpet case is interesting, and they can be like, yeah, or mm-hmm. no, and then that doesn't go anywhere, because right. you haven't... So you anchor with something, a shared commonality. Mm-hmm. You can say, oh, that's a cool trumpet case. If yeah. they don't reveal anything, you could say, I used to play trumpet in right. band. You have... I did used to play trumpet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so then you reveal something about yourself mm-hmm. that gives them something to go off of, and then you encourage. And if they deny it, then you 
go back to a shared thing or you reveal more about yourself. It's, it's a dance mm -hmm. because if you do too much encouraging, then it feels like an interview. Right. And if you do too much revealing, then you're weird mm -hmm. because that person never gets to say, or you're egotistical. So it's the balance of that, but start it off with an anchor. Right. And then reveal right. and then encourage. And that's what he did with the KKK. Are we on to number two? An intelligence investigation. In quote. Well, sometimes you're, sometimes the goal is just to learn. For a, at a party? Yeah, yeah. Think of talking to people as an intelligence in investigation instead of some sort of at, like a getting to a goal. Like, yeah. Have a I'm... conversation that is an intelligence investigation. You know, you're just like, who is this person? And see where that takes you instead of starting with the goal. Being like, I'm going to take her to the movies, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to... If he was yeah. like, I'm going to take down David Duke, he wouldn't right. have had anything. I find that at parties or yeah. at situations where I'm like, I got to get... What is my objective right. out of this? I feel like I do that a lot too, where I'm just like, I need to achieve something so that I can go home at the end of the night and feel like good about myself that I like challenge myself or, or I need grew. To, or I need to tell my story. Right. And to... When really, if I had just shut up and listened, I would have done all of the growing and all of the, you know, yeah. point of view changing. All I would have done it if I had just shut up and listened <laughs> and, you know, let go. Pursue an intelligence investigation tonight. Number three. <laughs> So the Denver airport, we talked about how Stapleton had his name. The racist. He was the mayor the and everything. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. a bunch of different stuff. But he had his name on the airport until 95. That's insane. And just in your community, in your situation, there doesn't necessarily have to be anything bad. But you're walking by a fountain. It's got a little plaque on it. See who they were. Like, actually Google the name and see what the story. Go up to it. Read what the story is. Because there's all this historical influence in your town. And some of it might be bad. Some of them, it, probably most of it is great. Yeah. But you can be knowledgeable. You're you're in your town. You're hanging out with people. Yeah. And say, hey, you know that little park that a bunch of homeless people sleep in? You it's know what made, happened there. It's this guy <laughs> or gal. And they made that thing. Number four. Hippopocracy. Hippopotamocracy. Hippopotamocracy. <laughs> uh, but take the silence of it. You know, you might, it's not, it's not about the battle. It's about the war. If, if you're feeling like you're about to pop off, somebody's telling you something that you just, you feel like you, you can't let it stand. Somebody's going to make you mad. It's going to happen. It happens to us all. But think about the long term. Think about Ron Stallworth waiting for his moment. Ex all of them exposed for idiots. Oh, and the fi the fireman, I think, you've got to do your job. You've got to do what you're there to do. Unless it's illegal. Unless it's the, unless it's illegal. You know? But you can't treat anybody any different from anything else. The idea of you're going to be in a gathering or an event or doing something, and something is going to be asked of you. And you just roll with it. And you roll with you it. You roll with it. You make you make it. You make do on the fly. But you're the and host, you the and you want to have a good time. And but your job is to make everybody feel involved. You're putting yourself aside, the task at hand being more important than the, the hypocrisy of not yeah. doing it. Yeah, there it is. Number five, well, the weird one: startup culture in the clan. Maybe let people how know how silly the clan was. Yeah, I I think maybe because people are afraid, or people think it's not real. It is real, but it's doofy. It's real and it's doofy, and they... the stuff they care about is creepy. But the way that they're going about it is party city. <laughs> if you're putting together, if you're hosting a party, if you're if you're helping somebody put on a party, and they're like dissatisfied with it, or they don't feel like they're prepared, or they don't feel like the night is is set up to do well, you just go like, "Well, it's better than a clan party." <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even get a hundred people. <laughs> yeah, couldn't even get a hundred people in a city of a how... national organization, yeah. a city of uh, hundreds of thousands of people. No, not fifteen. Met at the steakhouse. But yeah, so whatever you're doing is probably more well, more you're well organized. Let people more in, know. Yeah. <laughs> how dumb. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it. Well, let's recap it then. Our our ways. Let's go through all all five our ways to sound cooler at parties. Number one, what to talk about with the Grand Wizard. The R method: anchor, reveal, encourage. Boom. Number two. An, an intelligence investigation. It's not all about the goal. Sometimes you're just trying to learn. Sometimes you're just trying to go out there and see who people are and what's going on. Boom. Number three, Denver International Airport. History's all around you. Look at it. Find it. Talk Embrace about it. Embrace it. Number four, hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Be that Jackie Robinson. Yeah, be that Jackie Robinson. Use it. Close your mouth and let the hypocrisy speak for itself. And the bigger man will win at the end of the day.
So. Number five, startup culture in the clan. Whatever you're doing tonight is probably more well organized than anything the clan has done ever. Talk about it. That's it. We learned everything there is ever it is to know. That was Black Klansman, y'all. But now, now you know. Now you know. Now you can go out and use some of this stuff. Hopefully sound cooler. But that's been the show this week, guys. Thanks for listening. This has been Illiterate. Sign up for that email. Illiterate at email.com. That's where we're doing our giveaways. That's where we're doing our memes and our, our extra reading, all that kind of stuff. So illiterate at email.com. Go out, have fun. Love y'all. Peace. Thank you guys. Bye.